Well, in case you didn't know, I'm kind of obsessed with power strips. I know it's a weird obsession, but anyway, I got this one on an Amazon deal, whatever it's called, lightning deal, and uh, it just looked cool. It's yellow. I like a yellow power strip. It's kind of neat. You don't see those too often. It's the Yellow Jacket. Uh, that's the brand name. It doesn't really have a model name, but it has surge suppression and some other stuff like widely spaced outlets, and it's made of metal, which I very much like for safety reasons and durability reasons. So if you want to look at the box, that's what it says. So in this video, I'm going to be taking this thing apart briefly to show it to you. Uh, my other power strip videos were nonsensically long for no reason. This is going to be a quick one, maybe. <laughs> Well, anyway, I don't think you really need an unboxing for a power strip, but, uh, yep, because that's all there is to it. This also has a very nice long cord. It says 15 feet, which is pretty cool. One of the first things I look at when I take out a new power strip is the rating of the cord. Now, this has NEMA 15 amp outlets on it, so you would think that the cord should be rated for 15 amps, and indeed, it is a 14 gauge cord, which is rated for 15 amps. So hooray, it's got marks for quality right there. And unlike another power strip I looked at a while back, oh, is that plastic, seriously? This is not metal. This is plastic on the back. I am not a fan of a metal power strip or metal face in a power strip with plastic on the back. It's kind of disingenuous. In fact, I thought this thing was made of metal. Uh, in fact, Amazon kind of led me to believe that because it says right here, durable steel case. Yeah durable steel case partially otherwise it's uh it's fucking plastic on the bottom that's that's a load of bullshit right there yeah not a fan yellow jacket you can shove this right up your ass as far as i'm concerned just for tricking me with the packaging it doesn't say durable steel case with plastic fucking bottom on it well anyway no not anyway the reason you don't want plastic on this is because if it overheats plastic will melt and just sort of pfft, splooge on the floor and maybe light your carpeting on fire or whatever the hell surface this is on. If this was all metal, before the case would melt, the wiring inside would melt and short against the case, and the case being grounded, or at least should be grounded, it would in fact trip the breaker or whatever overcurrent protection you have upstream from this. It might even trip the overcurrent protection on this switch. But if the plastic is on the back and that melts and nothing actually shorts against the case, then you might just have a really hot freaking thing melting all over your floor. So just generally not good. Like why? Like why can't you just put a metal back on? How much more money could that possibly cost? And if it costs an extra dollar or two dollars, I would pay that because I want a metal power strip, not a bullshit fucking half metal, half plastic power strip. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting, but again, durable steel case, pfft, no. Durable steel top plate and plastic bottom. And this doesn't even feel like particularly heavy grade steel. I had high hopes for this, so I'm kind of disappointed. Anyway, let me take this apart and we'll see what's inside of it. Fucking thing. Okay, well, it's held together with six, you know, kind of, oh, seven. Well, it's held together by six kind of long screws and then one finely threaded screw. Like these longer screws clearly go into the plastic where the finer thread screw is probably a bonding screw to ground the case. Ah, what the hell was that? All right, yeah, this whole thing is just kind of like plasticky on the inside. I mean, yeah, it's got the durable metal case, which, by the way, I mean, I guess it's all right, but it's, look at that. It's not really that thick of steel. Anywho, it's, uh, yeah, very lightweight without the case, which doesn't inspire confidence. And it does have these, like, child-proof receptacles, which I find odd, because like you really shouldn't have children crawling around with power strips anyway. But uh, yeah, one feature I did like about it is that the switch here, by the way, it has a, uh, there's a ridge around it. So like, if you knock into it with something, it won't necessarily shut the switch off or turn it on accidentally. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, I'm gonna dig a little deeper now. All right, and there we have it. It was just uh, six screws to get these two halves apart. This is really flimsy feeling plastic, by the way. Not too fond of that. And inside, this is absolutely nothing special. 
It has a couple of bus bars for neutral and live and a grounding bus bar that is very flimsy and uh, yeah. As far as construction goes, this is nothing that you wouldn't find in like a five to $10 power strip. Uh, nothing special at all here. Cheap plastic on the front, cheap bus bars in the middle, and on the end, a surge suppression module that looks like Lucifer himself jizzed all over it. Sorry, that was a little, uh, was a little blue for one of these videos, but man, there's a lot of flux residue on here, like a lot. And man, and these two solder joints here, okay, wow. This is where the neutral and live bus bars join to this circuit board. This is a surge suppression circuit board. There are two blobs of solder, like the bus bars come up at a right angle and then join in, or keyed into the circuit board here. And so the only thing bridging those two is this solder pad or this one. And the solder pads, you can see they have a matte finish to them, they're not shiny. That usually means these are cold joints. And if they're cold joints, they probably do not have very good contact with the bus bars, which means that under a heavy load, like let's say the full 15 amps for which this is rated, or 14.5 amps, whatever, um, yeah, these might very well overheat. I can't say that for sure. I don't want to libel or slander or whatever the speaking one is, uh, this company. But man, this looks dangerous. Um, and it just looks very sloppily put together. Yeah, uh, ooh. And I don't know, you might not be able to see this too well, but right there on the end of the neutral conductor, there is just a, a piece of uh, burnt insulation. It looks like someone touched the tip of the soldering iron to the insulation itself, not that it was burned from the opposite side from just the pad heating up. Uh, yeah. Not very uh, encouraging there. As far as surge suppression goes, it looks like it has a two pack of metal oxide varistors on this side. I'm guessing that's what they are. They're heat shrink together. And there's probably a thermal fuse in between them to uh, cut out the power if they get overly hot. Uh, yeah, and then two more on this side. So four metal oxide varistors, couple of thermal fuses is what I'm guessing. I'm not gonna go to the trouble of taking this board off and really digging into it because already I could see this is a piece of crap. Like, I'm not fond at all of the way this was constructed, just looking at the solder job here. So, um, and the cheapness of it overall. So really there's no point as far as I'm concerned taking this board off, like what's it gonna prove? It has great surge suppression, but it's still a fire hazard because the soldering sucks. Like, yeah, there's no real point in getting into that too heavily. Yeah, uh, oh, and there's a capacitor there's a capacitor in here for smoothing or, uh, or EMI suppression. I don't know. It's uh, just disappointing. Just really disappointing. And um, they really blob the solder on heavily overall. So they're relying on the thick solder to, uh, to actually augment the track so that they could handle the current flowing through them. I assume that's what they've done. The other reason I can't, it's not easy to take this board off, by the way, because this switch, this type of switch, pushes in from the front and then clicks into place and has a faceplate on it to keep it from being able to pull it out that way. And so presumably they put the switch in first, then they soldered the board onto the switch. So I would have to desolder these heavy pads right here. I mean, I should probably desolder this whole thing and reflow it if I'm going to use this. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. You kind of get the point, I think, of uh, the quality overall. It does have a little uh, jumper here coming off the grounding bus bar or, or coming off the uh, grounding wire here from the uh, actual cord set. And that was screwed onto the side of the case where they actually have the paint uh, masked off so it actually gets metal on metal contact. So this thing is at least properly bonded to ground. But I mean, they might as well have just made this out of plastic because this is made out of plastic and the back is made out of plastic. So this being made out of metal, I mean, I guess it helps with durability a little bit, but uh, some good quality plastic would be just uh, just as well. And as far as what the, what the box promises, um, it does promise protects against electrical surges. It doesn't get into too much detail. It does say 1050 joules. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Has overload protection. That's presumably the breaker, which is built into the switch. Wonderful. Uh, 
we already argued durable steel case, high, visibil high visibility yellow cord. I guess I can't argue with that. It's pretty high visibility. Um, as far as the back of the box goes, it sort of repeats all that. Gets a little more specific saying it's a 15 amp circuit breaker, which is fine. Uh, sliding protective debris covers. Now, first when I looked at these, I thought they were childproof covers. They just slide over and then uh, cover the hot and neutral. But I mean, I guess they're not really that childproof because a child could pretty easily just move that. So they are officially debris covers. I don't know if they intended these to be childproof covers at first and then they were like, eh, maybe we can't, we can't really say that. So let's call them debris covers. I don't know about you, I've never had a problem with debris getting into my power strips. I mean, I guess it depends on how you're using it, but I mean, you know, I use circular saws and drills and stuff, and I never really had a problem with like sawdust accumulating in these slots. But uh, then again, maybe I'm just not like sawing right over the power strip. I guess those come in handy, but realistically, I mean, who are we kidding? If you own this, you would just leave those open all the time, right? Probably. And, uh, yeah, slots on the back allow easy wall mounting. I mean, yeah, every fucking power strip in the world has slots on the back that can slide over screws to wall mount. Except this is a cheap piece of plastic, so the metal power strip you thought you were buying will be mounted to your wall via cheap plastic. So, great. And it says, finally, I looked at this and I got these wall wart power supplies out just to test this, because it says two spaced outlets for adapter plugs. Now, to me, this spacing, which you can kind of see better on the case, doesn't look that wide. I mean, it's slightly wider than these, sure. It seems great, but when you actually look at it, I'm gonna stick this in here for a second. This is a fairly chunky power supply, I'll grant that. But if I put it in this one, ah, well anyway, you get the idea. If I put it in this one, you can see, you can get a regular plug in here and probably a regular plug in here too, but, it does say two spaced outlets for adapter plugs, not plug. So there's no way to get a second one in there with this big one. Now that one is pretty big. This one's sort of more standard size, I would say. But again, with that there, there's no way you could get even a relatively small wall wart style power supply next to this one. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you know, there's, yeah. And look, I mean, modern power supplies, like USB power supplies, are usually in a form factor that would actually fit in one of these uh, receptacles anyway. You can put two of them side by side with this regular sort of spacing. You don't actually need the wire, wider spacing. So it's of limited use. Like you'd need two power supplies that were just the right size, like too big to fit in these receptacles, but small enough that you could actually get two of them side by side in these receptacles. I frankly don't think many are gonna fit the bill. So it's a bit disingenuous to say the spacing is for adapter plugs it kind of accommodates one extra adapter plug, not multiple. But then again, they're aiming this thing, it seems, for like DIY garage style use with its durable steel case. So uh, I don't really know why I need too many of these in the garage. I mean, it's like, why not just add a little more spacing? Or at least not brag about it. So yeah, overall, yellow jacket power strip. By the way, ah, I should point out, this says Yellow Jacket on the front. They make a big deal about like the branding is Yellow Jacket. But if you look at the back, you can see it's Coleman Cable and Woods. Now Woods is a subsidiary of Coleman Cable. That's fine, I have no problem with that. But Woods, in my experience, makes a lot of cheap ass power strips. So this is nothing out of the ordinary for them as far as I'm concerned. I don't mean to poop all over your brand, Woods, but I don't have a positive association with your brand. And now I don't have a positive association with Yellow Jacket either. I mean, I guess you tried to create a new brand so that people would forget that you make shitty power strips, which I did, and it worked. So congratulations, you made a sale. But also, fuck you. Mostly fuck you for the durable metal case, which is in fact at least, I was gonna say half plastic, but I guess technically it's not half plastic, but you know, the bottom is a major fucking po portion of this. So I'm getting annoyed. And the, and the soldering also annoys me. So that also, you know. That's for Woods, by the way, not you, dear viewer. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my opinion. Uh, I paid this much for that power strip. It was too much. I don't care how much it was. It was more than $10. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, 
I guess I'm supposed to say subscribe, hit like if you liked it, and comment on my video. Everyone on YouTube says that. But realistically, do whatever the fuck you want. I mean, I shouldn't need to tell you that. If you want to subscribe, that's, then do it. If you don't, don't. I don't know. I'm kind of sick of hearing that at the end of every YouTube video. I've said it myself, so I'm like being hypocritical here, but yeah. Um, also, I'm really, really bad at ending YouTube videos. So I guess, as Jordy LaForge would say, make it so. No, that was dumb as hell. I'm not leaving that in the video. <laughs>